Hi, it's Shanti from Bamboo Leaf Tea, and I want to go back, go way back and talk about what the heck is bamboo. Because there's a lot of information out there and not all of it is accurate. And I've been growing bamboo for about 15 years. I've been working with it for about 20 years. So I wanted to give you just a little bit of a baseline what exactly bamboo is so that you know. So we're gonna start with talking about the different varieties of bamboo. Now there are over 2,500 known varieties of bamboo at this point and many more coming. And they vary everything from something that's about one foot tall to something that is a hundred feet tall. The smaller ones have small culms. Culms are the stalks of the bamboo that you can see behind me. Those are called culms. And obviously the bigger ones have much larger culms. Now some of these big bamboos, big giant bamboos, timber bamboos, there's lots of different names for them, can have a diameter, which is across, for about 10 inches or even bigger at times. Um, that's a really big bamboo which are super fun. Now here in Florida, we don't grow those. Um, in Central Florida, I can grow tropicals, which are mainly clumping bamboos. I can also grow runners, which are more temperate bamboos. In some tropical regions, there's um, in Costa Rica, for instance, there's a bamboo that grows that binds, even like a grapevine. So many variations. Now the temperate bamboos are typically from colder regions. The tropical bamboos are typically from warmer regions, although there are some clumping bamboos that grow in colder areas, the Fargesias, for instance. And so in these northern bamboos, when they come down south, they tend to run much faster. They tend to be smaller. But I have to say, because there's a lot of negativity out there about running bamboos, that if you have never walked through a bamboo forest, a running bamboo forest, you need to do that. Put it on your list and get it done because to walk through a giant bamboo forest is just amazing and you can only do that with running bamboo. Um, clumping bamboo like the one behind me has a little bit more open space but it's still not the same thing as walking through this beautiful essence of bamboo like you can in a running with runners. So the runners are also called monopodial. Now monopodial comes from the Greek word meaning one foot and what happens is when they grow they send out the rhizome which is part of the root system and it goes straight out and so they'll have a mother plant and this is over the first three years what they do is they'll send out a rhizome and you won't see a lot of activity but maybe you'll see one little clump come up somewhere far pretty far away from the base plant. And then what happens is the bamboo starts to establish this territory and then it systematically fills it back in and it will keep doing that and it will just keep growing. Um, clumping bamboos, which are sympodial, which means many axes, because they grow out from the center and they almost have like a little U shape that comes up. Now some of them, that little neck can be longer, like the ones behind me, which means the columns are more spaced out. Some of them are shorter, which means that the columns are more tightly together. So there is some variation on that, um, but they all have that and they'll just kind of come out. Now, if you go out into your front lawn, you may be able to find both types of this type of growth just in the grasses that you see, because most grasses that grow in this kind of range, either one or the other, they either stay in one place and grow out from that, or they run and, and establish territory all over the place. Both types, can be fairly aggressive because if you have a big bamboo, it will grow a lot. And here in Florida, the clumping bamboos, um, you will see a lot more growth, uh, especially at the beginning stages. And I'm not exactly sure, but I, I would guess that something like a ventricosa is gonna be a pretty close run on a runner as far as the actual biomass that you are growing. So that tells you a little bit about that. Um, there are three ways to make new bamboo plants. Um, one of them is by cuttings. And what happens is the inner node at the bamboo is the growth point for growing new bamboos. And so you would take that and put that in the ground and, and try and create new bamboos. You can only do this during the, the wet season when the, the, that area is activated. Now some of these do these pretty easily. Some of them pretty much don't do them at all. Um, I've been in places in Costa Rica where they've built a little bus shack and the bamboo is sprouting out of the top of it. Um, that is pretty unusual, but it can happen. 
And then you can also find other areas where you're trying to take bamboos and make cuttings from them and it doesn't do anything at all. So it, it kind of varies. The other way to do, to make more bamboos is to do a root cutting. And that's just simply to take part of the root system and make a new plant. Uh, the third way is flowering. And bamboos are very special because they do what's called gregarious flowering. And that means that that one bamboo plant will flower wherever it is, in Thailand, in Africa, and the United States, and it will flower all at the same time. Like it has a little clock in it that says, okay, it's time, and now it's time to flower. Now this has a, typically a very long cycle. There are some with shorter cycles, but these cycles can go up to 120 years. And so we just don't have the information at this point as to which ones were, will flower at which point. Um, some of them we do if they have a shorter cycle, but a lot of them we just haven't gotten to that point. And when they flower, the plant will flower and flower and flower and flower and flower, meaning produce seed until the point that the plant actually dies and the new plants will then come up. And this is trying to add genetic diversity to bamboos because they're wind pollinated and so it's the opportunity for the bamboo to make something new and different. Um, so those are the three ways that you can make more bamboos. Now to talk about the root system a little bit, a little bit more, um, when you're growing bamboos, the clumping bamboos, the bigger ones especially, can have a root system that goes out even 20 and 30 feet. And what they do is they create this mat system. And I can show you a little bit on this. Now this is a clumping bamboo, and so it's got that neck that will come up like that. And then it's got this whole mass of this other stuff going on. Now grasses in general will create their own environment. And so what they do is they have this huge massive root system and it dies and it has compost and it is actually increasing the quality of the soil where it lives. Bamboos will go out and just take over the entire territory around them so that nothing else can grow. Which is a good reason why if you're gonna plant a clumping bamboo and you wanna plant other plants near it, you need to do them at the same time. So, because otherwise the bamboo will take over and it won't allow the other plant to grow. And if you try to dig into an area where an established bamboo plant is, it's, it's pretty hard work because that mat system, I mean literally, is just like go, digging into concrete. Um, so the mat system is very shallow maybe one and a half feet, two feet at the very most. Um, and it's like a big pancake. It's kind of like building in Miami versus building in New York. In New York, it's more like a pine tree. You do this big taproot system. And in Miami, you just do this big mat system. Now, bamboos will not come out of the ground if they're established on any storm system because they have such flexibility in combination with this enormous, massive root system that just anchors them to the ground. Um, so you don't have to worry about them during hurricanes or tornadoes or things like that because they're literally just whip around each other and they won't damage any area. So this gives you a little bit of background about bamboo and about the structure of the plant because I find that even people who do a lot of cooking and, and work with a lot of culinary parts of plants, they don't know the plant. And I just find that it helps with the energy of the plant and to really know more about the structure of the plant and know a little bit about bamboos and what they can do because they're super fun and you can do so many things with them. So that gives you a little bit of background and if you like the video please click like or share it with somebody who might want to learn or a child who might be interested in bamboo and I will see you next week. Thank you.